It's Thursday morning in Lagos. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the program. I am Nifemi Ogutoe. Just three more days, and it's the new year 2024. Thank you for your commitment to this morning and TV News in the outgoing year. We wish you all the best as we welcome a brand new year in a matter of days. Let's talk about the power sector in 2023. Just last month, we were told President Tinubu stopped the implementation of a hike in electricity tariff that would have added more burden on the partisan power of the average Nigerian. Of course, with the early removal of full subsidy we witnessed in the year. The president, according to the Minister of Power, insists that subsidy be paid on power consumed nationwide. But how much impact uh, is that having, uh, the non-implementation of the cost-reflective tariff? How much impact is it having on issues like liquidity and investments in the sector? We also heard the federal government has spent over 600 billion naira to subsidize electricity in 2023 alone. Uh, as we see forex unification and inflation's, you know, inflation rise in its numbers, uh, that has also pushed the cost reflective tariffs to about 124 naira per kilo, kilowatt hour. According to the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, the federal government paid the sum of about 2.8 trillion naira to subsidize electricity consumed in the country between 2015 and 2022. But that figure is expected to soar significantly in the coming year. A chairman of NEC has mentioned that um, the federal government will pay as much as 1.6 trillion naira to subsidize electricity in the new year except the current tariffs are reviewed to align with current economic realities. The Minister of Power also mentioned that the federal government would investigate the legality uh, or otherwise of the five-year license extension given to privatized power distribution and generation companies. He stressed earlier that the operating licenses of the firms would have expired uh, on 31st of October, 31st of October this year. Recall that in June this year, the uh, federal government also adopted the Electricity Act of 2023, which repeals the Electricity and Power Sector Reform Act of 2005. We'll probably also review the key features of that act and how they impact on the power experience of the average Nigerian in the course of this program. I'm joined now by communications specialist and lawyer. He's the CEO of Sage Consulting and Communications and former general manager, Corporate Communications for the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company for your body, Fadik Bear. Um, he joins me live from our Abuja studio. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you, Nifemi Ogutolu. It's so wonderful uh, being on your program this morning. I recall the good old days in Benin, and I'm delighted Absolutely. that we are meeting again. Thank you very much. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Good morning, Nigerians. Good morning. It's, it's been a while. That's perhaps why you call it Oguntolu instead of Oguntoye. But I'm going to find you for that quite much later. Oh, my, my, <laughs> my, my, my error. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's all right. It's, it's all right. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. I, I totally agree with you. There have been talks about the uh, delayed implementation of cost-effective tariff and um, you know how it's impacted on the multi-year tariff order of 2022 to phase out the subsidy in electricity tariff. But you know what? That doesn't make any sense to Nigerians, especially those who already feel the heat of the removal of full subsidy. Perhaps we should begin from there. Uh, 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 the, the, the issue of subsidy in the power sector is one that... Uh, stakeholders are really worried about and it's important that we get the the, the discussion uh, spelled out properly now what, what is subsidy in the first place uh, of course we all understand it to mean the payment of the difference between the true cost and the allowable cost I mean uh, every adult in this country and even the young boy on the streets I, 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 has acquired knowledge about that fact as a result of what we experienced in the uh, petroleum sector 
uh, upon the inauguration of Mr. President, the first thing he said was that subsidy is gone. And the moment that statement was made, there was a, a response in the petroleum industry immediately. The cost of fuel went up so radically that everyone felt it. Now, why did Mr. President do that? It was principally because the, uh, the, the petroleum sector was hemorrhaging. It was, there, there was serious leakage of blood, and the life of any object is in the blood. The same thing we are experiencing in the power sector today. I can tell you for free, and I'm happy with the kind of background report that you gave, that subsidy is a disinvestment in the Nigerian power sector. At the point of privatization, one of the fundamentals that drove the decision to privatize the power sector was the fact that government was not financially strong again to continue to fund a sector that was capable of providing funds for itself to bring about development and growth. But what has been the, 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 the experience today? We have seen consistently in the last 10 years where government has not had the courage to allow the sector to charge what can be regarded as the appropriate or cost-reflective tariff that will bring about investments in the sector. And so you see a sector that is supposed to be a catalyst for economic and social development struggling to survive because the liquidity problem is still there. I mean, you just mentioned it that in 2024, we are likely to see government subsidizing uh, electricity with as much as 1.6 trillion naira. I mean, that's not... We'll get to the details shortly, uh, Mr. Fadik, particularly what you call the liquidity crisis and, you know, how much impact this is having on the business, so to speak. But are we considering the economic implication of having Nigerians carry the burden of the cost-reflective tariff in the new year? Because that's perhaps a concern of the average Nigerian watching this show. We just had the removal of full subsidy that you alluded to earlier. We're talking about exchange rates skyrocketing, galloping inflation, and so many others that bring hardship to the people. Some would say it's not politically reasonable, and it will show government as one lacking in empathy. Now, your, your, your question is, are, are we considering the economic implication? Now, that, that, from, the, from, the, from the end user side, that's, that's the question they would ask. But what about the, from the investor's perspective? Are we also considering the implication of not having electricity? Are we looking at that implication? I mean, we, we have a choice to either bite the bullet or to allow this, the, 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 the sector to collapse upon our head. I remember uh, some few months ago, if not from last year up till this year, generating companies came out to say NBET, which is Nigeria Buck Electricity Trader, was owing them as much as $1.6 trillion. And that if that money is not paid, they can no longer guarantee power supply in the country. Transmission may not have said what the sector is owing it, because transmission belongs to the federal government. But discos have also expressed their own concern about the fact that what is being recovered from the customers or the end user is nothing close to what they ought to get. And that's why they can also not service the, the, the other, I mean, pay back to the market operator what they are supposed to pay back. So... Going by your question, are we considering the economic implication? I will tell you very clearly, my brother, that to consider this matter from that perspective is also to say that we don't mind not having electricity in this country. And that is even much more disastrous than considering it from the customer side. Why? Because manufacturing will go down. Cottage businesses will go down. Unemployment will skyrocket. Social problems will rise. For instance, crime will rise. Can we accommodate that? We will stretch our military. We will stretch the police. We will stretch the DSS. So many things will happen. So what is, I mean, which one do we prefer? To allow people to pay more 
and be able to I mean, allow the sector to survive or to continue to ask governments to provide the subsidy that it cannot provide, which I call the Santa syndrome. The Santa syndrome is a syndrome that allows one person to consume an item and another person pays for it. For how, even with parents, there is an extent to which you can subsidize or you can continue to allow your children to live under your roof. Once they get to a certain age, you start asking them, young man, when are you going to, uh, when are you going to start fending for yourself? Mm. This sector and can you, only survive if it is allowed yes. to fend for itself. Interesting analogy you have given, but you agree that that period of time when the young man or woman leaves the house, is always not very, very palatable, even though when you now look at it, when you look back at it, you might appreciate that decision. But stakeholders have also emphasized that electricity tariff um, should have been raised months ago. But here's what government is saying, and I want you to re react to this quickly, because according to the minister, Mr. President was quoted to have said, we can't touch the tariff until we are able to achieve regular and incremental power supply. It makes sense, doesn't it? Now, now I, 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 can, I can understand the minister's position. Service and then pay. But there is also the flip side, which, is, which makes it a cyclical argument and brings in the chicken and egg argument. Which one goes first, payment or service? Which one, which one should come first? That's an argument that's a bit difficult to resolve. But the truth of the matter is that the investor has put his money there. He has made some investment. Let's give credit to the investor. I mean, that we have electricity in this country today is because some people have stuck out their necks to say that we want to invest in this sector as they did with telecom. Yes, privatization has come. In the telecom, we had liberalization, which is a different business model entirely. But that of electricity, the question that we are asking is, should electricity be a social service or should electricity be a commodity? Should it be treated as a commodity? And the economic argument, which makes sense, is that electricity should be treated as a commodity so that the right price can be charged, so that there can be more investment in the sector. Nifemi, with profound respect to you and other Nigerians, look at the power sector 2013 to 2023, when 10 years was celebrated, has there been a new song in the sector? I mean, we need to answer this question. Have we sung a new song in the sector? Those of us who are quite familiar with trends in the power sector will tell you very clearly that there has been no new song. And a principal reason for that lack of new song is because the liquidity problem continues to be a major challenge. We need to answer the question. Are we going to run this sector on compassionate grounds or we are going to run it on economic grounds mr president said no to increase in tariff on compassionate grounds but compassion is not a business principle it's not a business strategy you don't run business on compassionate grounds you don't run it with the santa syndrome or santa santa claus approach you just have to decide whether you want to be a father christmas or you want to be an economic uh, business uh, yeah. that is exactly the point that we are trying to make are there other options in the interim? Because, you know, there's also a way, and I understand your position perfectly, but there's a way things become so difficult that it's impossible for investors to also do business. And that's perhaps the angle from which government is looking at it from. You know, this, um, this, um, uh, 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 this, is, this is supposed to have taken a new dimension in June or July thereabout, and government may have, to, may have thought that it was too early given the removal of fuel subsidy. But there's also the advocacy for the pricing of gas utilized by the Jenkos uh, in Naira to allow better management of uh, the foreign currency-related inflation that we've seen in the sector. You must have had uh, even the minister fought the, the current pricing of gas utilized by Jenkos in, in dollars. According to him, it's perhaps... Um, one of the biggest issues in Nigeria's power sector. Do you agree with it? Now, the, the, the issue of gas, yes, we produce gas in this country. I mean, we have natural gas, uh, and uh, I mean, there's also the issue of associated gas and every other 
conversation around the issue of gas. Gas is a major uh, driver of our power sector. As a matter of fact, I think our power sector is dense in favor of uh, the gas producing stations. I think it's about 85% and then you have uh, hydro and uh, other ones covering the other uh, 15% and things like that, or slightly lower, I mean, uh, different from that. But the point we need to note is that we have the gas, but what about the equipment that you will use in bringing out the, the gas? Do we produce anyone in this country? So even if the Honorable Minister of Power comes up with the argument that it does not make rational sense that you have gas, but you are selling it in dollars, in forex. What about the equipment with which you will extract the gas itself? What about the equipment? Are you manufacturing anyone? Are you not going to import all of those equipment? So that argument from that perspective is a little bit challenging for me to accept. And because of that, it's going to be a bit difficult to now start saying that selling gas in Naira will substantially influence the cost of electricity. No, I, I, I beg to differ from the position of the Honorable Minister. He may have more facts that I don't have, but as an analyst, looking at it from outside, I think we need to look at the position of the Honorable Minister of Power a second time and be able to align the data. Let's use data to drive this conversation. For instance, as I speak to you this morning, Nifemi, the number of customers on estimated billing is 7.1 million. The registered customer is about 12 million plus, maybe about 12.6 million. Now, look at that little arithmetic. It means you have less number of customers on the metering platform. And that, is, in effect, has a negative effect on the recoverable or what the end, I mean, the discourse or the sector can recover from the, from the, from the user. So these are, not to now talk about the fact that government is allowing subsidy. Furthermore, is the fact that government has frozen the, 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 the cost of electricity, but it has not frozen inflation. It has you know, not frozen you have, you, the, the you price have of the Naira. Very you may have raised another very important point because when you look at the number of registered customers at 12 million, that's, that's far away from the actual number of people in this country using, using power. But are you saying that there is any significant impact or implication of removing subsidy on getting more people metered or getting more people registered or, you know, by inference, getting more Nigerians to pay for the power they consume? Now, I, I hope I, I got your question clearly. But this is what I want to say in response to that question, if I got it clearly. Now, 12 million, 12 million registered customers are not the ones consuming electricity. I mean, that fact is clear. We cannot run away from that fact. You have more people consuming electricity than the 12 million registered customer. Exactly my point. Go to any disco. They will tell you that there are free riders. They will tell you that there are free riders. And they, they are doing, I hope and believe that they are doing everything on a daily basis to bring in the free riders so that they can recover more. But guess what? The more people they bring in, the more the subsidy level will increase. Because the more people you bring in, more people will be consuming power. There's no doubt about that. Or put in, in another form, more people are consuming power now, but less people are paying. So that means the, the, the subsidy is still going northwards. It's still on the rise. So when you solve metering problem, hopefully in the shortest possible time, and we are able to reduce subsidy substantially. Because in the first instance, let's even ask ourselves this question. Who is benefiting from this subsidy? Is it the poor or the rich? Is it the poor that is benefiting from this subsidy or the, the, the rich? The idea of the multi-year tariff order of 2022 is such that discos that are in you know, highly urban centers 
are allowed to charge tariffs uh, near cost reflective you know tariffs and then discos that are in areas with low income consumers are allowed to charge lower um, allowed tariff uh, that in a way ensures that um, they get more of the subsidy are you are you saying that is not the situation as we speak no 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 that's I, i'm not saying that is not the situation but over a period since that 2022 there has been a movement more in the direction of discos in the urban areas favor i mean the the, the the subsidy favoring them and that means it is those who are well to do that are benefiting from the subsidy that's just the logic of that position that you have raised and it is very very clear they consume more of the energy i mean okay for instance I think the last calculation by the regulator, and we must commend the regulator for, for getting to that extent. The last calculation by the regulator was that if you charge the true cost, electricity is likely to be about at least 100 naira per unit. But what you are charging currently is about 50% lower than that 100 naira, slightly above 100 naira per unit. So there is a huge gap that the rich is benefiting from. Meanwhile, even the poor themselves, they are not getting the supply. Now, the second argument is this. Even the poor that we are trying to defend, they are also saying, give us the electricity. We will buy the one that we can buy and use it. They still use, I better pass my neighbor. And, I'm, and I know that as, a, as, a, as an experienced journalist, you are familiar with the trend in their, in their better past my neighbor uh, space. People still use it to run their barbing saloon, to run their hair making saloon, to run their vulcanizing business. They still use that I better past my neighbor. They buy fuel of about uh, 3,000 naira. That does not last more than about six hours in a day. You cannot put your refrigerator on it. You cannot put your pressing iron on it. You cannot put your electric cooker on it. All of those ones are resting when you are using that I better pass my neighbor. But we are saying, and if you calculate I better pass my neighbor, it's likely to be about 200 naira per, per unit of electricity. We are saying, okay, move it a little bit further than where the tariff is now so that you can recover more and be able to provide electricity for everybody. Is that too much of an argument to, to I mean, is that too much of a request to make for this market to survive? For this market to survive, is that too much of a request to make? I think we need, we need to sit back and bite the, the bullet. For once, let's bite the bullet. Inflation let is us, running very us, high. Let us also try to probe, you know, the subsidy regime as it is currently constituted. Some have raised the issue of the delay and bottlenecks, you know, associated with um, paying the electricity subsidy, uh, the slow cycle that you mentioned earlier. Do these discos get the reforms as at when do you? Uh, you talked about the development earlier. We, we, we heard from Jenko's warning that they may not be able to sustain current electricity supply levels, you know, following the payment of only 28% of an invoice for uh, power supplied to the national grid by the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading PLC in the September payment cycle. Do you think there's a sense in which if we get the monies to them early enough, um, it will resolve the issue of liquidity, uh, liquidity in in the interim, while we resolve and, you know, systematically remove subsidies, so to speak. Now, th again, you have raised a very crucial point, and I must thank you because it tells me that you have done a bit of research in, concerning this matter. Now, one fundamental problem about the issue of subsidies is that, okay, government has said, I will, I, I will, I will, pay, so I will pay the differential between the true cost and the allowable cost. But even at that, because of the paucity of funds available to government, government is not able to pay as at when due. So, and look, we, we cannot blame government for everything. If government had the power, I'm sure that government would have said, let's do everything. In the days of uh, the, the likes of the former military head of state, General Yakubu Gawan, God bless him for this country. 
they came out, although it had its own economic problem, but they came out, they started unity schools. Federal government really does not have any business with unity schools. I'm sorry we are digressing, but I'm just trying to, to bring out a point. The government came out and said, eh, Udoji Award. That also had its own problem, okay? But the point I'm trying to make is that when government had the energy, the financial muscle, to do all of those things, government went ahead to do it. Now that government does not have the energy to do it, it is not only, it is not only uh, making a promise, it is making a promise that it cannot fulfill, and when it is able to fulfill it, it's not fulfilling it at the right time. Because there's supposed to be a right time when the subsidy is supposed to be, to be paid to the market. So that they can, I mean, look, look at what happened in Damaturu recently, in the uh, uh, northeast, where some, some vendors pulled down transmission uh, tower there. The people in that place need electricity. If there is no money to do it, it means that they will go and borrow. At what cost? There is a cost attached to funds. So all of these things are very, very crucial to the survival of the market. And one of the, number, one of the principal things is the economics of power supply, the fund to drive the system. Investors want to come in, but when they look at the numbers, they look at the return on investment, it is better for capital to go to a different place. Capital or money can only gravitate towards the place where there is value. If there is no value for money, if there is no value for capital, capital will move away. And that's exactly what we are experiencing in this country today. Mm. Very interesting development, and government hasn't shared.